because Keir Starmer, um, the shadow Brexit secretary for Labour, has said that they have decided and agreed a policy on Brexit. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. We have to break the impasse. We have to find a way forward. A referendum is the only way. And of course, Remain should and will be on the ballot paper, along with a credible option to leave. We need to ask people a basic question after three years of failure by this government. Do you want to leave on the terms on offer or would you rather remain? Now, we asked Keir Starmer for an interview, but he wasn't available. As I say, Stephen Kinnock, the Labour MP, is here too from MPs for a Deal. But first of all, um, Kevin Maguire, can you, in a nutshell, explain Labour's Brexit policy in about 20 seconds? Yeah, the Labour, the Labour Brexit policy now is for a referendum with Remain on the ballot paper. The dispute is whether the party will then campaign for Remain in that referendum. And Tom Watson, the deputy leader, has come in now and he wants the referendum be, to be before a general election, while the Labour position is it would be after, probably not in the first year after. And then, of course, there's another group uh, with Stephen, who now want to cut a deal. You probably, I think, if there was, if, if May's deal came back with a tweak and Boris Johnson's face on it, there might be two, maybe three dozen Labour MPs who now would probably support it. Right. The credible deal, the credible leave deal that Keir Starmer is talking about, what, what, what is that? That will essentially, if you take May's deal, then you will put in worker protection, environmental protection, consumer rights protection. It's basically what Labour was pushing when uh, Jeremy Corbyn would go for talks with Theresa May. Uh, and of course, we, we knew they would never get anywhere because politics was involved as well as, as trying to sort uh, this out. Is that going to stand scrutiny on the doorstep? I think it's still quite confusing. I mean, that was quite a big nutshell uh, that Kevin managed to produce all the same. And I think this is the, <laughs> the problem. No. It, uh, there's also MPs who disagree with their party's position. I mean, the Tories have, have dealt with that by basically getting rid of their MPs, but Labour doesn't seem to be doing quite the same ruthless thing, which might be a good thing for people, people like Stephen. But... <laughs> Joe, jo, most, most Labour MPs, members and voters are Remainers. If Labour goes into an election uh, without a very clear so statement places. where, it, believe me, it is, if, uh, if it goes into a, an election and it's not very clear, it will have serious trouble from both ends. You have the Brexit party and the Conservatives nibbling one way, and then you have Luciana and the Liberal Democrats and the Greens coming another way. Right, and if there was a choice between Theresa May's deal or Remain, Stephen Kinnock, which would you choose? Well, I don't think we should have a referendum. Uh, so the way to solve this mess is not by a general election or a referendum. It's to leave the European Union with a deal. That's the manifesto that I stood on in 2017. I take an old-fashioned view that members of Parliament who are elected on a crucial part of a manifesto such as that need to stick with it. And the big mistake Labour's made is we ended up muddying the waters, shifting from one position to the other. We've had more positions on Brexit than the Kama Sutra and uh, nobody out there has a clue what we're doing. Authenticity and consistency matter at least as much as the substance of policy. And we should have stuck to our guns and said, the Tories may well want a reckless no-deal Brexit. Liberal Democrats and other opportunists, opportunists jump on the bandwagon of a second referendum. We're going to stick to the party line, which is we will leave the European Union, but with a deal. What do you say? I mean, it's still not clear and it's rejected by MPs like Stephen. Of course, Stephen, uh, in a minority in the, in the, parliamentary, in, in the mm. parliamentary party. And Jeremy Corbyn's policy all along is a, is a natural ingrained Eurosceptic. He campaigned uh, to, to remain. Uh, I believe, speaking to other people, he's being converted to the remain cause. But he realises that there are voters in Stephen's uh, constituency, uh, Labour, Labour voters in Aberdeen, who want to be out. And then you have other seats where Labour voters want to be in, and he's trying to keep that coalition together. Now, you can, you can have that creative ambiguity for so long, and it might get you so far, but in an election, you will just melt in the fierce heat of debate. And we saw the European elections yep. with the Liberal Democrats and the Greens 
taking those Labour votes because lay, lay, the bulk of Labour voters are Remainers. It's also it's not just him trying to bridge the gap between MPs and voters and so on. It's, it's his own advisors. I mean, his own office. Yeah, but he's got to decide over himself. What position he's got a, to he's, take. He's a, he's a grown up and an adult, and we but he is, blaming he's, the courtiers. I think is wrong. It's, well, it's, it's, it's the king. The yes, who's made the mistake. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. he does decide need to decide which advisor he's going to listen to at, at the very least. One thing I'd add is even if my constituency had voted Remain. I, hand on heart, would have the position that I have now. This is to do with what is in the national interest and what is about the, uh, the deeply divided, polarised culture war that we're in. Mm. And if anyone seriously thinks that another, another referendum is going to put our country back together again, and I'm in politics because I want to help to unite communities and reunite and have a whole nation politics, which, by the way, we will never have if we have a general election whilst we're still in the European Union. So the way through this mess to get us out of the quagmire is to leave the EU but with a deal, certainly not without a deal. And that's the position we set, we set out very clearly in our 2017 manifesto. You're wrong. Your position for a second referendum is totally wrong. Well, I don't agree with that. And actually, I read um, Stephen's piece today. I thought you did want to, you did support the idea of a second referendum today in, your, in the piece that I read. I mean, the challenge is, is that we find yeah. ourselves three years on from the referendum and there's many things that could have happened during this intervening period. I'm now proudly a member of a party that's got a very clear position. We want to stop the chaos and we want to stop Brexit. As you rightly pointed out, it was at the European elections that actually the country wants that clarity. They want that unequivocal position. And we saw in the results that came from the elections, in, uh, back in the, uh, the European elections, you know, how well the Liberal Democrats fared in the face of that. Um, and first and foremost, we want that people's vote because Parliament's unable to contend with what's happening now. We've seen, you know, over the course of the last few weeks and months, let's take the deal, the actual terms of the deal, back to the country and see if that's what they really want. Well, it sounds like you might sign up to what Tom Watson, the deputy leader, is now proposing, which does rather contradict Keir Starmer. Let's have a listen. I will argue that our position going into that election should be totally clear. We should unambiguously and unequivocally back Remain. We should back Remain not for electoral or tactical reasons, but because it is the right thing to do for the country at this time of greatest crisis since the Second World War. So a second referendum before a general yep. election. Yep. Which, is, which is the Tony Blair position. It's the people's vote um, position. Uh, we're told it takes six to nine months to organise uh, a referendum. I've never understood quite why it should be it so be long. Africa. But the Electoral Commission process is there and it's rather, rather cumbersome. But that would push off a general election at, some time, at the back end of next year um, at the earliest. The, the, the truth is, you've got one group pushing uh, for, for uh, a second referendum, others for a second general election in, uh, in just over two years. And I think whatever, whatever path has gone down, Steve, I don't think there's any way of uniting people well, now one, because one people are so, clearly, are so divided. And this is going to be with us 30, 40 years in politics. For those who are campaigning for a second referendum, what we, we clearly need uh, the Prime Minister to bring a deal-enabling bill to Parliament. I mean, he has three options now. He either breaks the law by refusing to seek an extension or he resigns or he does a deal. Bring a deal enabling bing, bill to Parliament, that's going to be amendable as in the normal way and those who are campaigning for a second referendum are very welcome to table their amendments at that time but we've got to break the deadlock what? by having that bill to Parliament. You voted for the May deal at the, uh, the, uh, the, the, final, the final when, time, yeah. When no deal was taken off the table by her. If it comes time. back in the way that Stephen has suggested, will you vote for it? Uh, no, because at the, oh. at, the, at, the mo at, the, uh, at the moment, on the basis of uh, uh, Theresa May's deal, uh, no deal, no withdrawal agreement is a better position for the United Kingdom to be in than the terms of the withdrawal agreement, which would then oversee and play into the, the most important negotiation, which is our future relationship with the EU. And we are not looking at this strategically. Um, the country was faced with a binary decision, whether to stay or leave the European Union. And it was made explicit in that referendum, the decision the people were taking. They took the decision, which obviously came as a surprise, um, that, uh, that leave won. Uh, there is now, uh, I think, out there in the country, uh, not least amongst people who voted to leave, but amongst people who voted to remain, are utterly fed up with this wretched psychodrama that's being played out uh, in Westminster. And the other thing that's being being damaged is the uncertainty about what Britain's future role is going to be. That's where the damage is coming to the United Kingdom, and we have got to address it, and we've got to get this over the line on the 31st of October, in the national interest, honouring the decision the people took in 2016. And if we, if we miss that, we are going to be in mortal trouble 
um, our politics is going to be uh, poisoned. Okay, and, you're, uh, and you're in favour uh, not just future. of a second referendum, but Joe Swinson has said that actually the Liberal Democrats will become the party of revoke. So, first and foremost, we want that people's vote. If we don't have that people's vote, and if the general election comes for first, then our, the, the platform on which the Liberal Democrats will be standing is to say to the country that we are a party that wants to stop Brexit. And if you want to stop Brexit, then vote for the Liberal Democrats, because we will then revoke Article 50. It's a very clear position. And this does underline the problem that Labour have, that, that even if they wouldn't want to go anywhere near uh, as far as the Lib Dems have, the Lib Dems are so clear and strident on their policy, whereas Labour's sort of, I don't know, wandering around in a swamp, really. And I think it's really significant that Tom Watson has given this speech, urging his party's position to be uh, a certain one, because actually it just shows Well, he's how... saying it should be unequivocally remain, yeah. which implies they should go for revoke. Mm. Well, yes. I, I mean, this is one of the problems that they've been having recently as well, is that, you know, you had Emily Thornbury and Richard Bergen last week, sort of, I was in stitches watching them when they were saying, yeah, we're, we're going to negotiate a deal and then we're going to campaign against, against that us. deal to remain, which, you know, I, th there are all sorts of different types of game theory, but I've never heard of a game theory where you tell the people you're negotiating with beforehand that you're then going to reject the or thing you, they Or you, you tell them you're going to accept a deal at any price. Right. But, but, Stephen Kinnett, yeah. but you, you've had a pop at the Lib Dem. Uh, today, saying the decision to support revoking Article 50 mirrors the no-deal extremists on the other side of the debate. So, is Luciana an extremist? I think the debate has polarised to the point where everyone thinks everyone else is a traitor. And we've got to move on from that. Uh, uh, what I'm absolutely clear that if we had a referendum, it would be, you know, that would be turbocharged. Uh, I think if we have a general election whilst we're still in the European Union, it would be a referendum in all but name. That would turbocharge the... The, the chance of betrayal. So what I think we need is compromise. Uh, I don't think a democracy can survive unless it's able to compromise. That means that each side has to recognise that the other side has politics. And uh, for me, the compromise is, and I really hope that colleagues such as Crispin will recognise this, that we need to break the deadlock with a bill that enables a deal. But, but, and, but, and colleagues have to be ready to vote for that at second really reading. Central problem and they can then table amendments at committee stage about shaping the future a, relationship. So you've got to get it over the line at second this, reading. Is that the country was asked to take a fundamental decision about its future. Yes. And it took that decision. You can't yeah. then compromise it by saying we're half leaving and we're leaving, uh, leaving the political institutions uh, but, leaving, uh, uh, but remaining in the auspices of, of the oversight of the EU without even a seat round the table, Christine... which, is, which, is, which is in effect uh, the deal that is on offer. And the country made a decision and it's actually up to us. Um, all credit to you saying we've got to get a deal, but however, that just kicks out from under the government its main negotiating lever. But you know, there are many varieties of that. Yeah. The 2017 yeah. manifesto repeated eight times that the Conservative Party will facilitate leaving the European Union in a smooth and orderly manner, yeah, and so did ours. Call me old-fashioned, I think um, we should well, stick to our manifestos. Well, unfortunately, we didn't win that election, um, which is actually exactly. where... It was actually did win the 2017 election? Um, uh, no, you might have noticed we were a minority government. Well, we're still the largest the, party. We're still the largest party. With the government. It's yeah. our power. But, and it's that, <laughs> it's the curse of the 2017 election, um, which was meant to produce uh, against a weakened Jeremy Corbyn, 20 points behind in the polls, a thumping Conservative majority, so Theresa May will be able to impose whatever deal she right, negotiated. Just fine. The, the, the lesson from 2017 is that a general election is not going to solve anything. And, that, and that's why we need to take it back to the country. Well, and the government is so convinced all right, we'll let, this is what the country well, wants and take the, right the deal back let's to the country. Let's talk about what deal could be on the table, because Boris Johnson talks endlessly about getting a deal. Thank you very much, by the way, um, Stephen.